Welcome to Kaloshte Ida Online, my continuing series of classes I should be teaching and will continue to teach from an online perspective. Today I am going to be covering a little bit of maths, particularly the maths assignment. Before I jump into that, I know the students have been contacted about the way that exams are going to work out this year and that in the most part the exams are going to be moving to a model where it's going to be an assignment instead. Trust me, I'm working quite hard on figuring out the best way to do that assignment and deliver that to you. So my plan is uh, probably by the end of the week I will have more things I can tell you and I will be able to let you know probably tomorrow okay this is what's going to work out but at the moment we're figuring stuff out. Now I'm doing another bit of an experiment today in that I'm doing maths and I have purchased a Wacom Trab my brother has helped me set up and I'm going to be having a go at drawing you know, stuff, on, equations and things on the screen. We shall see how well it works out. In the classes I was just going back over, we didn't really get a chance to cover was, we covered a little bit of trigonometry, but I want to go through some other stuff that today, particularly some of the, um, well, some of the problems you're going to be asked to solve as part of the assignment you're currently working on. Um, now the first set of questions there is asking you to do a little bit of research yourself and figure out kind of in your own words what area of mathematics is studied in, tr studied in trigonometry. Now, we all know what trigonometry is about which is basically the study of lines and angles and relations of proportions and how you can use that right. So you have to do a little bit of research yourself and come up with your own words about what trigonometry is. I can't give you the answer to that. The second one is you have to give an example of the use of trigonometry in everyday life. It's not live, there should be L-I-F-E. Uh, basically, look through it, think about it. When do we use trigonometry in real life? During the classes, I gave you a couple of examples. I don't want to give you those examples again now, because it's a bit too transparent, but have a look there. Third one is give one example of the use of trigonometry in science. Again, have a think, do a bit of research, and you'll come up with an answer to that fairly easily. Part four here is kind of a fairly elegant little proof. It's about the unit circle. Now, a unit circle is a circle of radius one. You are going to be asked to sketch a diagram there of the unit circle. You're going to be asked to mark in all four quadrants and a point x, y on the first quadrant, which is not a point in the axis. You need to explain how the relationship x, y equals cos theta sine theta so the point x maps to cos theta and the point y equals sine theta where theta is the angle made by the radius or connecting x y to the origin on the positive side of the x-axis all right this is actually an elegant little proof um we'll flip over to the axis here and i have already inserted a diagram uh, here of the unit circle. Now you'll notice that the unit circle here is radius 1, which means from the center to any point on the circle is going to be 1 in length. And we have measured out that point. So that point there is basically x, y. Now the reason it's x, y is that it is x across and it is y up. And that angle there, here, is going to be theta. So that is our angle theta. Now, what do we remember about how you calculate sine? Well, sine is always going to be what? It is going to be opposite over adjacent. So if I go over here and I say, right, I've got my equation here, and I know that sine is going to be opposite over adjacent. So the sine of theta is going to be opposite, in this case opposite is of course y over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse in this case is 1 because the hypotenuse is 1, it's a radius. Similarly, 
cos theta is going to be the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So cos theta is going to be x. So we've proven that sine theta is y and cos theta is x. Therefore, the point x, y equals cos theta sine theta. And that there is our proof. Happy days? Happy days. Now, from that point onwards, you are going to be asked to make a couple of other uh, deductions. Uh, the first one of these really is that uh, to do with uh, to do with basically this point here. So I'm just going to try to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Indicate if the ratios below are positive or negative in each of the four quadrants of the unit circle. Now, this is actually, there's a couple of different ways to figure this out. Well, the first one is, I want you to think about the unit circle for a second. So we know that you're going to be asked whether sine, cos, and tan are positive. So let's look at the first circle for a second. In this one here, is every value of x going to be positive? It is. Right, so this first quadrant here, um, this is the first quadrant. That's the second. That's the third. And that one, and that one there is the fourth. So, in the first quadrant, you have x is always going to be positive. Y is always going to be positive. Cool. Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Now, does that mean that x, any value for x over 1, which is cos, is going to be positive? It is. How about sine? Every value over 1, is that going to be positive? It is. And lastly, we've got tan. Now, tan, if sine is basically opposite over hypotenuse and cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, tan is, I'm going to remind you now, tan is... In this case, it's going to be the opposite, which is y, over adjacent, which is x. So if y is positive and x is positive, all values are positive. So in the first quadrant, first quadrant, they're all positive. Now the second quadrant, let's have a think. Is y positive here? Y is positive, right? Because y, we're still going up. We're still going up here for values. So in this guy here, y equals positive. But x, because this is the zero, zero point here, if all values to the right of this for x are positive, but all values to the next of this here, right? So x here is going to be negative. Now, sine is radius, hypotenuse is still one. It's always, always gonna be one here. So if the sine y Sine y over 1, sine's going to be positive here. How about cos though? Cos is x over 1. x is negative. Negative divided by positive. Negative. So all values of cos here will be negative. How about tan? Tan is going to be positive divided by negative. Positive divided by negative gives you negative, so tan will be negative. Cool. Let's go down here to segment 3. So this one here, y is going to be negative and x is going to be negative so sine will be negative cos will be negative but tan is going to be negative divided by negative which gives us positive so tan's positive let's go over here to the last one all right so in this case here y is negative x on the other hand 
is positive. So, sine will be negative, cos will be positive, and tan negative divided by positive will be negative. So, for the second part here, you just have to look through it and go, okay, which values are which? Grant, I can know which ones are which and where. Just apply that same logic to it. Where are, they, where are the negatives, where are the positives? Okay. The table here, next up, requires you to effectively figure out, more or less, the differences here. Basically, this is 210 degrees. What's that in radians? What's that in cos, sine, and tan? You'll need to use a calculator for this or a log table. Okay. Now, when you are converting degrees to radians, your calculator will do that for you if you basically use it to switch to the function where you can switch between uh, radians and degrees. You can also remember that pi in radians is 90 degrees, 2 pi is 180 degrees, 4 pi is 360 degrees, and you can apply the same logic there to that one. All right. And pi over four is forty. Uh, pi over uh, four is uh, forty-five degrees. So pi, sorry, pi is one hundred eighty degrees. Two pi is three hundred sixty. Uh, pi over two is ninety. Pi over four is forty-five. Pi over three is sixty. So apply the same uh, logic there and figure out. So you need you got two hundred ten degrees. You figure out what that is in radians. What cos two ten is. What sine two ten is. What tan two ten is. And then you know that's two pi over three. So you need to convert that from radians back to degrees. Then find the cost of that, the sine of that, the tan of that. 315 degrees, what's that in radians? Cost, sine, tan. And this one here, you're given the answers. You're gonna to need to sine inverse and tan inverse that and find out what the answer is and just fill that table in. Grant. This next one is to give you an example of when the cosine rule is used to find the measure of an angle in a triangle. So let's just... Uh, Save that there for a second in case we need to revisit that one. So this one here, you're being asked, um, in what situations do you use the cosine rule to find an angle? Now, so I want you then, this one, to draw out a triangle and give me information such that you could only find the information using the cosine rule. Now, the cosine rule works off what equation? Which is basically c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ac or a b cos c. So if you are being asked to find the side c, you need to know the side b, the side a, and the angle c. So you would, if you're looking to find a side, you would go, okay, I will give you a triangle when I know b, I know side a, I know angle C, and I can find angle C. Now you can also rearrange the cosine rule, and when you rearrange the cosine rule, you can make it basically so that the angle's on the other side. Now to do that, you go, okay, well, C squared minus A squared plus B squared divided by minus 2AB equals cos c. You use that one when you know all three sides, but you don't know any of the angles. And you can use that one to find the angles. So happy days. So that's how you use it for cosine to find the angle and to find the sine. Now, the sine rule is used in slightly different circumstances. Um,
a sine rule is used in slightly different circumstances. And in this one here, we're asked to find the measure of an angle in a triangle. Now, the cosine rule is, you're asked to find the angle in a triangle, you're used to find sine A over side A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And you can also flip that upside down if you be. So if you're being asked to find an angle, you will need to know, let's say we're drawing a triangle here, and we have angle A and angle B, and that's side B, side A, and side C. And you will need to know if you're trying to find an angle, you will need to know side B. If you're trying to find angle A, say, you know side B angle B and side A. If you're being asked to find the side, you need to know angle A, angle B and side B. Okay, so you just need to give me two examples like that. So draw two triangles, fill in the required information you need to calculate it. And there you go. If you understand how the equations work, you're grand here. Okay, so this is the sine rule used to find the length of the side. And draw a simple diagram to illustrate the use of Pythagoras's theorem. Now, uh, Pythagoras's theorem, you should all be well aware of it, but the, sum, uh, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So I want you to come up with a theoretical triangle that that was true for, sketch it here, and basically show that side, uh, the one, one side plus the other side, square, both squared, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Straightforward. And this one here, is to provide your own figure for the length of side marked x. So this one here, you choose how long x is. So this will make this one individual. You basically go, I pick x for whatever value I like. You'll notice there's only one other value here. You can make this as long as you like. I wouldn't make it farcically long. But will that need to be longer than this? Yes. And given the general proportions here, I would ensure that, you know, that one there, I would square that, you know, and basically go, well, what would be a decent square here? Let's make it at least twice that, maybe a little more than twice that. And that'll work out then in general proportions there. Okay. You basically provide your own figure, put it in there, uh, keep it in proportion. All right. Okay. Now you use the trigonometric geometric rules to find the following all with the nearest whole number. That is the length of all sides and the measure of all angles. Okay, so you're looking at this one here and you need to find what the length of this side here is, what the length of this side here is, what the length of this side here is, What's that angle and what's that angle and what's that angle? Okay. Now that is not necessarily a right angle. Okay. Don't be fooled and think, oh, that looks a bit like a right angle. No, no, don't assume that. You need to find each one of the missing bits here. And this will be different for everybody because you're going to be picking different values of x. So you need to find the length of all sides and the measure of all angles, and that's a decent amount of work there. And this is a decent amount of workspace has been allocated for that. Then you need to find the area of the quadrilateral. Okay, so you could use the half the length by the perpendicular height, but the perpendicular height is slightly awkward to calculate here. You can use also the formula one half AB side A by side B sine C, and that's the other area of a triangle formula. So one half AB sine C. So if you this was you decide this is C, you'd be okay sine seventy two multiplied by a half a 101 by whatever this is one half by 101 by that by sine c and that will give you the area of the triangle because they're two triangles you need to calculate the area of that one and the area of that one and add them together because i've been asked for the area of the quadrilateral okay and that's that one there now um as they apply trigonometric functions to explain the meaning of the following terms amplitude 
you should be able to explain that but we know amplitude is how high the curves go and period is how regularly the curves repeat so you need to see how that applies to trigonometry and apply those definitions there okay that's the last of those set of questions there for the maths thing if anyone has any questions feel free to ask uh, I will be doing another stream tomorrow, uh, probably on anatomy and physiology, I think. And um, we'll do a little bit about that, maybe about the muscles and the skin and a couple other topics. If people have questions there, come along. I will hope to have some news about how the exams are going to be collected there. Just a short one today. I'm just proof of concepting this and making sure it works. So that's there if you want to take a look at it. Um, and I will see you all tomorrow then. I've been busy answering emails and we're going to get back to answering emails now. All right. Thank you very much for watching along and I will see you all later. Bye now.